Yeah, this video I'm going to be making here is a bit of a deep video. It's focusing on the women in the Bible. There's about, I think, about 20 the major names in there. I mean, the ones that spring to mind, obviously, are Mary and Eve and all the ones in between, isn't it? But, I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be focusing on, for some reason, it's just come into my mind and I've just done a bit of research on it. It's, it's again, this is something that seems to come up. It's getting into repetition again and also how the Lord works and how he likes to against all odds produce something yeah against all odds produce something I suppose you could say from nothing really you know and what we're going to be doing there's many women in the Bible isn't there I mean we can think of um, I mean you know Jezebel um, Samson and Delilah I can go down a lot of these women but I mean what I'm focusing on here is something that I've seen repeated in the Bible and it's something I would say is quite extreme with regards to women and it is re regarding women that had a prominent role to play in the Bible and they were either too old to have children and they had children or they were infertile or barren and they couldn't have children or they were virgins you know that only happened, as far as I know, it only happened once, didn't it, with Mary? Yeah, all those three situations are extreme, to say, to say the least, isn't it? And they are a prime example of, I suppose, signs, you could say, that the Lord does these things and there's no way science or anything can prove that it came from anywhere else, isn't it? I think that's what the general thing is. This has all come about a long time ago. Somebody, well, say a couple of months ago, somebody left a comment and... I'll put it up on the screen here and they've left it on here if i'm making this video is for it's aimed at women that maybe are experiencing a similar situation and i don't know i'm just reaching out to you if you're listening to this now the chance of this getting many views i don't know i'm not making it for the views i'm making it to just prove a point and i'm not here to tell you to come into the faith or whatever it is but but yeah, that woman left that comment and, uh, you know, she was asking me to, to pray for her son. And I've, I've, I've got back, I must have, I read it. It only been out a couple of hours. I was in, um, you know, one of those coffee shops and um, I must admit, it welled up my eye and I thought, oh my, crying out loud, you know. And yeah, I, I immediately responded. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, I, I gave a Bible verse. Hopefully that would help. And I just said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I will pray for your son, you know. But I, I don't get many of those things because this is more of a prophecy channel. It's not really, I'm not really here to provide a shoulder to cry on. But I mean, like I said, if, you know, I'm not really that type. As I keep saying, I'm a bit of a Joshua type. There's plenty of other channels where you can go out there and they'll, they'll do that sort of thing. But if somebody does ask and, and, and they're at their wits end, then yeah, I, I'll try to help. Or I'll try to direct them to somewhere where they can get help. Or, you know, just give them some Bible verses, whatever it is. I'm, I'm here for anybody. But... But this is a particularly difficult video to make because I'm not a woman, but this is aimed at women that may be in this situation. And this has happened a number of times in the Bible. So I'm just, just gonna look at, it's about seven or eight times this has happened. It's happened enough times and the offspring from those were very notable people. They were, they include, you know, Jesus and John the Baptist or John the Baptist samson you know we've got the beginnings of the bloodline of israel itself you know the whole thing was from these quite extreme sort of births i suppose really things that you know defy all logic and reasoning yeah so what i'm going to do i'm going to start off with um at the very beginning i suppose the one that intrigued me this is um something that i've been researching i'm doing a prophecy video at the moment it, it, this will give you a hint of what country i'm i'm actually looking at in the middle east and where they feature in bible prophecy and i thought i'd do this video first because it's not quite finished yet so and it's basically pharaoh's daughter during the times when the children of israel were in egypt and they were slaves weren't they and pharaoh's daughter finds moses in the rushes and i remember this as a kid you know and she adopts him doesn't she and the original mother that put the baby there in the first place which is moses she called him moses she named him but she nursed him but 
she was officially adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. And at the time, Pharaoh himself was, he was concerned about the birth rate amongst the Jews. And that's what this woman did here. She just dumped it and hopefully somebody else will find it, that sort of thing. But, and that's what happened with this Pharaoh's daughter. She came down to the river and she, she bathed there and she had an entourage with her. You know, she's quite a prominent figure in the uh, society at the time. And she sees the baby and, and adopts, adopts him, you know, takes him in. That's the first one. Now, the thing is, I've read somewhere, you just wonder why, why was it her? It could have been anybody else, couldn't it? But it, you can see the reason why, isn't it? Why the Lord picked her. Somewhere I've, I've read, it doesn't say it in the Bible, somebody is saying that maybe she was infertile or barren. She didn't have any kids, and that's why she adopted that baby Moses yeah maybe it could be that but what I'm trying to say is that woman Pharaoh's daughter had a pivotal role in biblical history isn't it what would have happened if Pharaoh's daughter didn't find that baby if somebody else would have found it would or if nobody ever found Moses at all what would have happened with the Ten Commandments you know the parting of the the Red Sea the the, the whole thing isn't it the Exodus it make it makes the mind boggle doesn't it yeah so this brings us back to what I keep saying in the Bible is um, bloodlines are very important and you know anything vitally important in the Bible is going to happen then there is a course of events that will happen that will lead to that event happening no matter what. If we go through all these ones, you'll just see it's a repetition over and over again. Um, Sarah and Abraham, Sarah was, again, she she wasn't, well, she was, it says in the Bible, quote, Genesis eighteen eleven, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Basically, she was, past the age that she could have children yeah but in genesis 21 she uh, the lord said to her that she's going to conceive and i think she thought at the time it was quite funny but uh and she had isaac yeah so and that was the beginning of the the bloodline isn't it and then we had the same situation this continuation with this children of israel bloodline we get come to rebecca and Rebecca, it was the same situation again. She was barren. This one, this one, she, woman, she was barren. And but Rebecca conceived, and she was told that two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and, and the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Yeah and she gave birth to Jacob and that is the full bloodline there when whenever you hear in the Bible it's over and over again the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob and all of these came from barren women yeah miraculous births if we go into Rachel and Jacob when Jacob married he married Rachel and she was the sister her sister had a number of children but Rachel again was barren and she said unto Jacob give me children or else I die but the Lord heard her and, and she gave birth to a son and she gave birth to Joseph who again was a very prominent figure in the Bible isn't it if we go on to somebody called Manoah he was from the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren, and she bare not. This is mentioned in Judges. And But the angel of the Lord appeared unto this woman. We don't know her name. but uh, And the angel said, Behold, now thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. And she gave birth to Samson, didn't she? Again, another example of um, a woman barren, infertile, um that the more you look at this you know uh, i mean i'm not a woman myself but and, and it's difficult if you're not a christian to understand isn't it but it is you could say i suppose a curse in a way in worldly terms but it is a blessing in disguise because you're being saved for greater things i think yeah and the next one is elkanah and he had two wives and he had one was 
Panina, the Panina had children, and the other Hannah never had any children at all. Well, she was again, and and Hannah, this one is a very particular one. She was very bitter and upset about him, very emotional, and it was eating away at her. But um, but she prayed to the Lord, and she said, "This, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid." But will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I'll give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And the Lord heard the prayer, and she conceived. And they had the um, the son was called Samuel, and the Samuel he became the latest, well, the greatest, ju- the last greatest judge of Israel. If you go to um, First Samuel two, Hannah prays to the Lord and gives thanks to him. It's a very emotional sort of um, prayer so sort of half the chapter there is devoted to it and then there's another one called Michal and Michal was the wife of David and and you look at second Samuel 6 23 therefore Michal the daughter of Saul had no child unto the day of her death she is the only one that never had any kids to her death all the other ones they were infertile or barren they were being saved for something very special yeah Another example is the Shumanite woman. Um, I'll put the Bible verses up on this, and you can read that for yourself, but that's in 2 Kings. And then we go into the New Testament. Obviously, we've got Elizabeth and Zacharias, and Elizabeth was basically, again, too old to have children. And she gave, she conceived with the Holy Spirit and gave birth to John the Baptist, who was destined for great things, isn't it? And then if we go to finally on to Mary and Jesus, the same angel, the angel Gabriel, went to Elizabeth and told her that she was going to become pregnant. The same angel, in pretty much the same time, went to see Mary, and it was the same thing again. I don't need to go into that favour, into that sort of... um, But I've left the Bible quotes here. You can read those. But what's the conclusion on this? I think God uses infertility to show his miraculous powers. I think um, all the women that were in that situation, they never lost faith in the Lord. Yeah, They were prepared to go to the grave. If that's what the Lord has done to, to them, they were going to be barren or their womb was closed. Then, But there's something about virginity and a closed womb that is very important I think it's used to create great things and I think you know all I can do is conclude on this that if you are somebody that's suffering you know from infertility then there's loads of websites out there I, I'm not a woman so I, <laughs> I don't know what it's like but I can imagine the pain and the suffering and I know it's difficult but you know when all when all else has failed when science has failed and everything has failed, all I can say is put your trust in the Lord, isn't it? And pray to the Lord. And you may be surprised what will happen. What I want to do is leave some two verses. These are concluding verses, one from Psalms and one from Matthew, which I think are very relevant to you know the women that are mentioned here. The first one is Psalm 113, 9. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children, praising the Lord. Yeah. And the second one is Matthew 10:37 from the New Testament. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And that is very relevant if you're in the Christian faith. And if you're in this situation, the same as these women here, um, you need to be aware of that verse in particular. Especially if you take Hannah, she, she never lost faith never lost faith in the lord and he gave her what she wanted didn't it what she needed very badly and that he was a great person so there is hope you know i think you may look on it as a curse but i think it's in a bizarre way the way that god works it's a blessing yeah anyway this is frank of the 12 gates slightly different video to normal keep your eyes firmly fixed on the lord and peace love and joy